Chapter 17 of Genji Monogatari. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Timothy Lucas. Genji Monogatari by Murasaki Shikibu. Translated by Suyematsu Kenchio. Chapter 17. Competitive Show of Pictures The introduction of the late Saigu, the daughter of the Lady of Rokujil at court, was now arranged to take place with the approval of the Empress Mother, the Princess Wisteria. All the arrangements and preparations were made, though not quite openly under the eye of Genji, who took a parental interest in her. It may be remembered that the ex-emperor was once struck by her charms on the eve of her departure for Ise, and though he never encouraged this fancy to become anything more than an ordinary partiality, he took no small interest in all that concerned her welfare. When the day of introduction arrived, he made her several beautiful presents, such as a comb box, a dressing table, and a casket containing rare perfumes. At her residence, all her female attendants and some others assembled who made every preparation with the utmost pains. In the palace, the empress mother was with her royal son on this day. He was still a mere boy and scarcely understood what was going on, but he was now fully informed on the subject by his mother and was told that a very interesting lady was going to reside in the palace to attend on him and that he must be good and kind to her. The presentation took place late in the evening, and henceforth she was called the Niogo of the Umetsubo, Plum Chamber, from the name of her apartment. She was a charming lady, and the emperor was not without a certain liking for her, yet Lady Kokiden, the daughter of Gon Chiunagon, Tono Chiujio, who had been introduced some time previously, and consequently was an acquaintance of an older date, was much more frequently preferred by him to the other for society and daily amusement. When Gon Chu Nagon introduced his daughter, he did not, of course, do so without hope of her further elevation, but now Lady Plum came to assume a position through Genji's influence, as if to compete with his daughter for the royal favor, and it was by no means glad tidings for him. It may be here mentioned that Prince Hiobukil had also, as we have already seen, an intention of introducing one of his daughters at court, but this hope was doomed to disappoint by the establishing of the two ladies already introduced, and he was induced to defer his intention, at least for the present. The emperor was very fond of pictures, and painted with considerable ability. Lady Plum, too, as it happened, possessed the same taste as the emperor, and used often to amuse herself by painting. If, therefore, he liked ordinary courtiers who exhibited a taste for painting, it was no matter of surprise that he liked to see the delicate hands of the lady occupied in carefully laying on colors. The similarity of taste gradually drew his attention to her and led to frequent visits to the plum chamber. When Gon Chiu Nagon was informed of these circumstances, he took the matter into his own hands. He himself determined to excite a spirit of rivalry. He contrived means to counteract the influence of painting and commissioned several famous artists of the times to execute some elaborate pictures. Most of these were subjects taken from old romances, as he conceived that these were always more attractive than more fanciful pictures. He had also caused to be painted a representation of every month of the year, which would also be likely, he thought, to interest the emperor. When these pictures were finished, he took them to court and submitted them to his inspection, but he would not agree that he should take any of them to the plum chamber, and they were all deposited in the chamber of his daughter. Genji, when he heard of this, said of his brother-in-law, He is young. He never could be behind others. He was, however, unable to pass the matter over unnoticed. He told the emperor that he would present him with some old pictures, and returning to his mansion in Nijio, he opened his picture cabinet, where numbers of old and new pictures were kept. From these, with the assistance of Violet, he made a selection of the best. Such pictures as illustrations of the long regrets or representations of Oshiokun were reserved, because the terminations of these stories were not happy ones. He also took out of his cabinet the sketches which he had made while in Suma and Akashi and showed them for the first time to Violet, 
who was a little angry at his not having shown them to her sooner. It was about the 10th of February, and the face of nature began to smile with the approach of spring, making the hearts and tempers of people more calm and cheerful. Besides, it was just a time when the court was unoccupied with the keeping of any festival. There could be no better chance than this for such an exhibition of pictures to attract the attention of people enjoying leisure. Genji, therefore, sent his collection of pictures to the palace in behalf of the lady of the plum chamber. This soon created a sensation in the palace. Most of the pictures that were in the possession of the lady of the plum chamber were from old romances, and the pictures themselves were of ancient date, being rare, while those of Koki then were more modern subjects and by living artists. Thus each of them had their special merits, so that it became difficult to say which were more excellent. Talking of these pictures became quite a fashionable subject of conversation of the courtiers of the day. The imperial mother happened to be at court, and when she saw these pictures and heard different persons at court discussing their relative merits, she suggested that they should divide themselves into two parties, right and left, and regularly to give their judgment. This was accordingly done, Hei naishi no suke, Jiju no naishi, and Shioshio no Miobu took the left, and on the side of the lady of the plum chamber, while Daini no naishi no suke, Chujio no Miobu, and Hiyoye no Miobu took the right, on the side of the Kokiden. The first picture selected was the illustration of the bamboo cutter by the left, as it was the most appropriate to come first for the discussion of its merits, as being the parent of romance. To compete with this, that of Toshikage from the empty wood was selected by the right. The left now stated their case, saying, The bamboo, indeed, its story too, may be an old and commonly known thing. But the maiden, Kakya, in keeping her purity unsullied in this world is highly admirable. Besides, it was an occurrence that belongs to a prehistorical period. No ordinary woman would ever be equal to her, and so this picture has an excellence. Thereupon, the right argued in opposition to this, saying, The sky where the maiden, Kakya, has gone away may indeed be high, but it is beyond human reach, so we may put it aside. When she made her appearance in this world, she was, after all, a creature of bamboo, and indeed we may consider her even lower than ourselves. It may also be true that she threw a bright radiance over the inside of a cottage, but she never shone in the august society of a palace. Ave no Oshis spent millions of money in order to get the so-called fireproof rat, which when obtained was consumed in the flames in a moment, is simply ridiculous. Prince Kuramochi's pretended jewel branch was simply a delusion. Besides, this picture is by Kose no Omi, with notes by Tsurayuki. These are not very uncommon. The paper is kamiya, only covered with Chinese satin. The outer cover is reddish purple, and the center stick is purple azadarak. These are very common ornaments. Now Toshikage, though he had undergone a severe trial from the raging storm, and had been carried to a strange land, arrived at length at the country to which he was originally dispatched, and from there returned to his native land, having achieved his object, and having made his ability recognized both at home and abroad. This picture is the life of this man, and it represents many scenes, not only of his country but of foreign ones, which cannot fail to be interesting. We therefore dare to place this one above the other in merit. The ground of this picture was thick white tinted paper. The outer cover was green, and the center stick jade. The picture was by Tsunenori, and the writing by Michikage. It was in the highest taste of the period. The left made no more protestation against the right. Next, the romance of Ise by the left, and that of Shiosami by the right, were brought into competition. Here again, the relative merit was very difficult to be decided at once. That of the right had apparently more charms than that of the other, since it beautifully represented the society of a more recent period. Hei Naishi of the left therefore said, If leaving the depths of Ise's night sea, we follow the fancies of new-fashioned dreams, all the beauty and skill of the ancients will be swept away by the current of art's modern streams. Who would run down the fame of Narihira for the sake of the pretentious humbug of our own days? Then Daini no Naishi no Suke of the right replied, 
the noble mind that soars on high beyond the stars spangled sky looks down with ease on depths that lie a thousand fathoms neath his eye upon this the empress mother interceded she said that the exalted nobility of lord hyoya may not indeed be passed over without notice yet the name of narihira could not altogether be eclipsed by his though too well known to all may be the lovely shore of ise's sea its aged fisher's honor name a tribute of respect may claim there were several more roles to be exhibited and the rival protestations on both sides became very warm so that one role occasioned considerable discussion while this was going on genji arrived on the scene he suggested to them that if there was any competition at all it should be decided on a specially appointed day in a more solemn manner in the presence of the emperor this suggestion having been adopted the discussion came to an end the day for this was fixed the ex-emperor who had been informed of this presented several pictures to the lady of the plum chamber they were mostly illustrations of court festivals on which there were explanatory remarks written by the emperor yengi beside these there was one which had been expressly executed at his own order by kim mochi this was an illustration of the ceremony which took place at his palace on the departure of the lady for ise some time back when she had gone there as the saigu it was also probable that some of his pictures came into the possession of her arrival and the lady kokiten through his mother as the mother of the former was a sister of the latter when the day arrived every arrangement was made in the large saloon at the rear of the palace where the imperial seat was placed at the top the court ladies of both parties those of the lady of the plum chamber and those of the lady of kokiden were arranged respectively left and right the left or those of the lady of the plum chamber facing southwards and those of the right northwards all the courtiers also took their places allotted to them here the pictures were brought the box containing those of the left was of purple azedaric the stand on which the box was placed was of saffron and over this was thrown a cover of chinese brocade with a mauve ground the seat underneath was of chinese colored silk six young girls brought all this in and arranged it all in order the kazami outer dress was of red and cherry color with tunics of wisteria lining light purple outside and light green inside the box which contained the pictures of the right was of jean wood the stand of light colored jean the cover of corian silk with a green ground the legs of the stand which were trellised round with a silken cord showed modern and artistic taste the kazami of the young girls was of willow lining white outside and green within and their tunics were of kedia japonica lining or yellow outside and light red within both genji and gonchu nagon were present by the emperor's special invitation as also the prince lord lieutenant of tsukushi who loved pictures above all things and he was consequently chosen umpire for this day's competition many of the pictures were highly admirable and it was most difficult to make any preference between them for instance if there was produced by one party a roll of the season with the masterpiece of some one master on selected subjects there was produced also by the other party a roll of sketches on paper which were scarcely inferior to and more ornamented with flourishing than the ancient works in spite of the necessary limitation of space which generally makes the wide expanse of scenery almost too difficult to express thus the disputes on both sides were very warm meanwhile the imperial mother the princess wisteria also came into the salon pushing aside the sliding screen of the breakfast chamber the criticisms still continued in which genji made now and then suggestive remarks before all was finished the shades of evening began to fall on them they remained on the right one more roll when the roll of suma was produced on the left it made gonchu nagon slightly embarrassed the last roll of the right was of course a selected one but it had several disadvantages in comparison with that of suma the sketches on this roll had been done by genji with great pains and time they were illustrations of different bays and shores they were most skillfully executed and carried away the minds of the spectators to the actual spots 
On them, illustrative remarks were written, sometimes in the shape of a diary, occasionally mingled with political effusions in style both grave and easy. These made a great impression on the emperor and on everyone present, and finally, owing to this role, the left was decided to have won the victory. Then followed the partaking of refreshments, as was usual on such occasions. In the course of conversation, Genji remarked to the Lord Lieutenant, from my boyhood I paid much attention to reading and writing, and perhaps my father noticed that I had benefited by these pursuits. He observed that few very clever men enjoyed worldly happiness and long life, perhaps because ability and knowledge are too highly valued in the world to admit of other blessings. True it is that even a man whose high birth assures him a certain success in life ought not to be devoid of learning, but I advise you to moderate your exertions. After this time he took more pains in instructing me in the ways and manners of men of high position than in the minute details of science. For these reasons, though on the one hand I was not quite clumsy, I cannot on the other say in what particular subject I am well versed and efficient. Drawing, however, was a favorite object of my taste and ambition, and I also desired to execute a work to the full extent of my ideas. In the meantime, I enjoyed quiet leisure by the seashore, and as I contemplated the wide expanse of scenery, my conception seemed to enlarge as I gazed upon it. This made me take up my breath, but not a few parts of the work have fallen short of these conceptions. Therefore, I thought them altogether unworthy to be shown expressly, though I have now boldly submitted them to your inspection on this good opportunity." Nothing can be well learned that is not agreeable to one's natural taste, replied the Lord Lieutenant. It is true, but every art has its special instructor, and by this means their methods can be copied by their pupils, though there may be differences in skill and perfection. Among arts, however, nothing betrays one's tastes and nature more than work of pen and brush, writing and painting, and playing the games of go. Of course, men of low origin and of little accomplishment often happen to excel in these arts, but not so frequently as persons of position. Under the auspices care of the late emperor, what prince or princess could have failed to attain the knowledge of such arts, a care which was directed towards yourself especially? I will not speak of literature and learning too. Your accomplishments compromise the kin, next the flute, the mandolin, and sol koto. This we all knew, and so, too, the late emperor said, with your painting, however, has been hitherto thought to be a mere amusement. But we now have seen your sketches executed with a skill not unequal to the ancient famous draughtsmen in black ink. It was about the twentieth of the month, and the evening moon appeared in the sky while they were thus conversing. Her radiance was too weak to make the ground near them bright, but afar off the sky became palely white, Several musical instruments were sent for from the guardian of the library. Genji played a kin, Gon Chiu Nagon a Wagon, the Lord Lieutenant a Sokoto, and Shio Shio no Miubu a Mandolin. The Hiyoshi was undertaken by a courtier. As this went on, the darkness of night began to diminish, and the hues of the flowers in the garden and the countenance of each of the party became gradually visible while the birds themselves began to chirp in the trees. It was a pleasant dawn. Several presents were made to the company by the imperial mother, and to the lord lieutenant a robe was given, in addition, as an acknowledgment of his services as judge in the competition. And so the party broke up. The role of Suma was left, as requested, in the hands of the imperial mother. Genji had some more roles of the same series, but they were reserved for some future occasion. During the reign of this emperor, every care was taken on the occasion of all court festivals, so that future generations should hold that such and such precedents took their origin in this reign. Hence a meeting, even such as described, which was only private in its nature, was carried out in a manner as pleasant and enlightened as possible. As to Genji, he thought he had obtained a position too exalted and an influence too great. There were, indeed, several instances of public men surprised by misfortune, who, in premature age, obtained high position and vast influence. He thought of these examples, and though he had hitherto enjoyed his position in authority, as if he regarded them as a compensation for his former fall, he began, as the emperor was now beginning, 
to retire gradually from public life, so as to prepare his mind and thoughts and devote himself to the attainment of happiness in the world to come, and also for the prolongation of life. For these reasons he ordered a chapel to be built for himself on a mountainside where he might retire. In the meantime, he had the ambition to see his children satisfactorily brought out into the world, an ambition which restrained him from carrying out his wishes of retiring. It is not easy to understand or define the exact state of his mind at this period. End of chapter 17 Competitive Show of Pictures Recording by Timothy Lucas End of Genji Monogatari by Murasaki Shikibu Translated by Suyematsu Kenshiyo